Okay, so today we're down at one of the creeks here and I'm sitting or standing in front of this little pipe right here that uh, Ben, who I'm gonna introduce here in a second, uh, put together for us today. And so you'll notice that I'm in some water. The reason that I've got all this water around me is because the beavers are actively damming it downstream. And so the water level's rising, which is why some of these slopes here are actually slumping. And believe it or not, this pipe is here because of the beavers upstream. So the beavers upstream have decided that they're going to build a dam and they're going to divert the water around on top of the, it's actually called a thalwag, that's the technical term for it, but the, the shoulders of the creek. And so there's overland flow moving across the land right now and it was coming across our pathway and basically saturating this land here, hydrating it and slumping it away. And I really want access here because we're gonna be grazing our animals. We get access to our trail system, which is also more pasture. And so I wanted to remove the moisture from the path. Remember water access structures. Access and structures typically don't like water. And so we have to design our access and our water so that they're harmonized and that one's not conflicting with another. So Ben basically put this all together and he did a couple of other things. He staked some willows into um, the hill and I'm gonna get him to talk a little bit about how he did that. But what we're trying to do with all these willows here is stabilize the bank. We're trying to stabilize the path. And because all this water is coming through, we actually want to create armor for the, uh, the landscape so that we don't end up eroding more of the soil. And so the pipe actually sits on these rocks. So the rocks are gonna take a long time to erode. And then as the water kind of flows over top of the rocks, it crashes into water. And so when you crash water into water, it depowers the water and all the erosive force disappears. So let's get Ben to talk a little bit about what he did today with the willows and the path. And at the end, I'll interject, I'll put a couple more points in there and talk a little bit about some of the designs. And while we typically don't design drainage systems in permaculture, for this particular situation, it was really important so that we maintain decent access to the property. Hey Ben. Hey Rob. How's it going? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Where are you from? I'm from Toronto, Ontario. Okay. So Ben's basically out here for six weeks. He's going to be woofing here at uh, Verge. And so we're actively doing all sorts of projects. So tell us a little bit of what you did today. Yeah. So today Rob had me fix up this path here. There was water seeping all Let's along Let's go over here. there. Yeah. And why don't you take the mic here so that folks can hear what you're talking about. Just stick it right in there. Yeah, turn it around. Okay. So this whole section of the path here was sopping wet, pretty much mud from water that was draining out from this way. So Rob had me dig a trench and put a two inch PVC pipe down along here to catch the water coming from up here and essentially move it along this path without actually getting the path wet. So I dug the trench, put in the pipe and then use some bentonite clay along the top to really make that seam watertight here between the sandbags above it and then the PVC pipe at the top. Why don't you pull back that sandbag there? Okay, so where's the bentonite? The bentonite is all of this gray stuff all around here. It works incredibly well. It's like a, a granular powder um, out of the bag and you mix it with some water and it really gets to a nice I don't know how to describe the consistency, but it works really well. And then so the water moves along here from the two inch PVC pipe into the weeping tile and then that drains down to what Rob was just explaining down below. Okay, so what else did you do today? So another thing I did today was I went in, planted all these willow stakes along the bank here to stabilize the erosion that Rob was just talking about. So, I mean, there's lots of wild willow just growing all around here. So I went with some hand cutters and just cut a bunch of growth that was about the size of, about the size of my thumb I was aiming for. Um, so I got 50 to 80 willow branches, aiming for them to be about the size of my thumb. And I went around with a piece of rebar and jammed that about six to eight inches into the ground and then stuck the willow branch into that and then sort of tamped it around with my foot. 
Down along the water, it was really murky, so I didn't even really need to use the rebar. Just stuck it in the ground. And the idea with that is that the roots will grow out of where we cut, and they have really um, long fibrous roots, so those will help to stabilize the landscape. I first heard about Verge just by finding some of their videos online, some of Rob's videos online, and then I happened to stumble across the online PDC offer for 50% off um, a few weeks ago, I guess a few months ago now, and I couldn't say no to that. I had been wanting to take a PDC for a long time and this was the perfect opportunity. And so I did the PDC, took a lot out of it. It was a really, really valuable experience, but I wanted to learn more. I wanted to see how these things that I was learning were actually applied in the real world. So Rob and Michelle were accepting woofers at their homestead, so I couldn't say no. My biggest insights today were probably just the power of water and the influence that beavers can have on a landscape. Um, what Rob was just saying, I didn't know that the, this was the result of the work of beavers, um, but to see, to see the water literally slump the earth off this bank like this, and to see the depression that the water was making along the path before we did the work that we did and what it would have been over time, um, it, it's a pretty incredible force and it's, I see why it's water access structures in that order. Okay, so Ben just, uh, come over here, Ben. Um, Okay, so Ben just uh, described what he was doing today, and what he built is essentially a weir. What's really neat about this weir, whether we're doing this for this particular drainage, or sometimes we can use these pipe systems that he just showed us in here in swales as well. Uh, when water flows like this constantly over land, it erodes it over time. Um, and so we can use these ideas in water harvesting features as well, S specifically when we're kind of bringing swales and access together. And what Ben has done here, without probably realizing it, he's gonna, I'm going to get him to do a couple more things tomorrow. But he's basically created uh, a weir with a spillway integrated into it, so that when this water uh, behind here in large rain events or in the spring melt gets too intense, for that two inch pipe to basically manage the water, this pathway right here that I'm standing on will actually become the spillway. And so for short duration, maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe a couple of weeks, this pathway will probably have water on it and that's okay. It's not the, the day or the week or the two weeks, it's the two months where things start to get challenging. And so tomorrow, what Ben's gonna do is he's gonna get the hand tamper and he's gonna make sure that the sandbags are nice and level right across. So it's a level sill spillway because when water goes over top of a level sill, it's passive. And then on this pathway, you'll notice that there's some undulation in it. And so I'm actually gonna get them to come down with a rake and we're gonna rake this nice and flat so that when the water comes over here, we have sheet flow as opposed to concentrated flow down the middle. And so the majority of the water in most situations is gonna go down the pipe over there but in really extreme events, we're still giving this the ability to kind of flow over top of the land. Over time, this path will fill in with grass uh, and it will knit it together. It may take some time for that to happen, but at least now this path, this whole access way that we depend upon for our livestock and for our vehicles and even for walking to get access to our land is now not gonna slump into the creek over there. Okay, so, um, Wanted to do this video to introduce you to Ben here. If you have any questions for him, you can leave it in the comment section below. You can ask him about how bad it is to woof here. Um, all the horrible food we eat and uh, all- It's been amazing. <laughs> it's been so good. <laughs> all, the, all the terrible experiences that he has to endure. If you're ever interested in woofing, you can find us on the Woof website. Yeah, if you're interested in taking a PDC, again, you can ask this guy, he'll answer any questions you've got. I think, Michelle just told me we're gonna be offering another online PDC in November. So you can check that out if you're interested in taking a, a step into the permaculture pool. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you found that useful. We'll talk with you guys real soon.